All right, we're here on a piece of land that I'm taking a look at for the possibility of being a market garden in the future. And I wanna test it first to see how good the, the bacterial activity is and the quality of this soil. And I'm trying out a new product here, the microbiometer. And this is specifically to test the microbial activity and the quantity that's in the topsoil of a parcel of land that you're testing. Now, I'm showing you with the kit here. I wouldn't normally bring it out into the field. You don't need the material inside to actually gather the soil samples itself. And there's a lot of small moving parts. So I actually normally leave this at home unless for some reason you need results right away. You can do this in the field, but uh, it's just as easy to bring the soil sample back inside. So the first thing that you need to do to get a proper soil sample is clear off any vegetation on the top. And I've already done this with the shovel, gotten rid of the grass and taken off some of the roots that are on the surface. And there's a lot of little bits of stone and gravel. You don't want those in your soil sample either. They're not going to come out in the sifter and they're not going to have a lot of bacterial activity either. The other thing that's really important for this test specifically is that the soil is what is called field moist, which means that it's been uh, humidified, it's got a little bit of moisture in it from the rain and not from a bottle of water that you go pouring on it. It won't work the same way. The thing is, most of the active microbial activity in the topsoil here only can thrive, only can live in these moist conditions. Obviously, it needs water to survive. And so if the soil is really dry, it's not going to show you how much microbial potential is in your soil. And if you just pour some water on it, at the moment that you're taking your sample, it doesn't have time to proliferate, to grow, and it won't give you an accurate representation of what's actually in your topsoil. After that, we're really only getting the top three to five inches, eight to 12 centimeters. Beyond that, there's not the, the majority of the active microbes, and that's really what we're testing. So you don't have to dig down very deep. Eight centimeters is really the minimum, and you don't wanna go much deeper than 12, okay? And then I'm trying to get a homogenous mixture. So I'm mixing it a little bit as I do this, and I'm gonna hold my soil sample in this bag here to go back and do the test at home. Now this is already way more than I need, but it gives me a good sample size for the topsoil on this site. And we're gonna go and do this test back inside. Okay, now that I've got all of my soil samples from out in the field, and I've got my test kit here, let's get started with the process. All right, so the first thing to do is to put a bit of soil into these sifters, because you want to get out any of the debris that you weren't able to the first time. And I'm just going to do this over the plastic bag so I don't get this all over the rest of the kit. Next, I'm gonna use the syringe to gather enough soil to fill this up. And then I'm going to compress it all the way down to just a half. And some's gonna fall out the bottom. That is okay. Get rid of any excess. And this is the amount that you need. Next, I'm gonna prepare the extraction fluid here. First, I wanna take a little bit of the extraction powder. Now, the extraction powder is a mixture of chemical salts that will help to remove the bacteria in your soil solution and precipitate the soil down to the bottom so that it separates out. Now, you wanna form this into a little tube Get the whole thing in there to make sure it doesn't spill and empty the packet inside. Now I've got my water here. I'm just going to dip that in the bottom. That's as much water as I need and pour that directly in. Now this little stand makes it nice and convenient so that things don't slip. And here is the whisking device. 
You only need to mix it for just a couple of seconds. That should be enough. From here, I'm going to add my half milliliter soil sample directly into the solution. And use the little probe to break it up so that it isn't compacted. Now we whisk again for 30 seconds. That's 30 seconds. And you can see that all of the soil is suspended into the extraction fluid. Now I've set a timer on my mobile phone for 20 minutes. It needs to sit for 20 minutes before we can take a dropper extraction and put it onto our test. All right, so now 20 minutes has passed and in that time I've gone ahead and done some of the other soil samples and I've got them standing here. But this is our original one, of course. So with the little given droppers, I'm going to take this sample and put three drops on the little test pads, which I'll then place on top of here in order to get our results. So here's the little test strip. And the main thing to get right is to try and make sure that your drops stay within this center point. You don't want them to go out anywhere else. So I'm very carefully going to drop one, two, and three, right there in the center. And now the idea is to place this right on this color tab and through the app, I'll show you how we get our test results. Okay, so here we are on the home screen for the microbiometer app and it's very simple to get started. All you gotta do is press the button in the middle, start the test. Now, it gives you the option to start from the beginning, which walks you through all of the steps that are required to actually do the soil sampling and the test itself. There's a great video that guides you through the whole process, but since we've already done that, I'm just gonna click on the button that says, I just need to image the test card. Now, you see that there's some options here at the top as well, whether it's soil, compost, compost tea, or compost extract, but of course, we just sampled soil, and that's already selected. I put in the name of my project and I selected to remember my choices. So let's just take the picture. So first I'm gonna add the name of the sample that I'm using. And this one is Puente because I picked up some sand and stuff near down by the, the bridge at the base. So accept that. And it'll immediately take you to the place where you put your little soil sample on top of the microbiometer base, which helps to calibrate the colors so that their readings are uh, the same on any different type of phone or with any different type of software. And I'm putting three drops, one, two, three. And now you start from a little bit further back and move in closer so that it has the opportunity to focus. And once that square is right there in the middle, it turns green and there you go. Now this has happened to me every single time that I've tried these tests so far. It says the card reading is too low. Adding three more drops will increase the intensity to give a more reliable number. After you've added three more drops, press retake. So three drops being added now. Let's see if we can get another result from here. So we've got focus. With a steady hand, I'm getting closer in. And now we've got our test results you can see the 82 UGC per gram. Uh, and then the FB is the fungal to bacterial ratio. In this case, I'm looking at 0 0.1 to 1, at about 6% fungal activity to uh, bacteria, which is at 94. And you can fill in the rest of the information here based on how you want to store the results in the app itself. And in the map, you can even choose exactly where you took those tests. Now this part is useful to do out in the field, but I kind of prefer to bring the soil samples back home. So it's just up to you. And there you have it. I have personally had some trouble in saving the results after I 
put in all of this information. And so instead, I have just been taking uh, screenshots just in case it doesn't save it the first time. And there you go. That's how you take a test with the microbiometer. Now, there you have it. Uh, that's all of the steps that I've learned how to use the microbiometer test. I've done multiples of each of these, partly to check the consistency in between the tests, the same amount of drops on each one, and to see if they line up with the same fungal to microbial balance and the numbers in all. And so far, they really have. So the consistency there is pretty reliable. Now, I don't have a huge amount of data to compare this to, and apparently from all of the different soil samples that I've done on that site, there is very low bacterial numbers in all of that soil that I've tested out, even in the, the forest floor samples that I've, that I've looked at. And they also had very low fungal to bacterial ratios, even in those contexts. So I'm not really sure what to make of that. I may have to call the uh, producers and see if they have any insights, but overall, the test seems pretty legit. The kit is very easy to use, even though there are quite a lot of steps. It's very logical. It's just a matter of being very well organized and taking a lot of good samples. So hopefully over time, I'll be able to collect enough data and see if things start to improve with different types of management or if they generally stay the same. But I'll uh, continue to try out different types of soil sampling tests and home labs and even sending them into the lab so we can compare the different results and see what they tell us about the different soil samples and trials that we try. I'll catch you on the next video.